afternoon, my name is Samantha Amick, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the use of the atomic bomb in World War II. Now, I come from a long line of military service men and women who have served both in the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. Few of them have fought and died in World War II. So take a moment, take a brief moment, and look at the pictures just behind me. Now, this is going to stir different reactions from different people. Let's talk a little bit about events leading to the use of the nuclear weapon, which you can find in Taking Sides, Clashing Views in American History, Volume 2. Now, during the war against Japan, when American forces were on Japan's territory, there was communication that was intercepted called ULTRA, U-L-T-R-A. And this communication, specific communication, stated that there was no intention of Japan surrendering. In fact, it is believed that they had very much an aggressive military expansion. So if we take a look, during this war against the Japanese, they used large-scale kamikazes to inflict as much casualties and harm. Now, a kamikaze is a pilot who would take their plane on a suicide mission, bombing either the tanks and our soldiers on the ground or our naval ships out at sea. One of the examples is the Japanese battleship Yamato on a suicide mission to Okinawa in their harbor where American naval ships were stationed. Further symbolized Japan's willingness to sacrifice everything, including inflicting harm on their own citizens during that suicide mission. So a little bit more about the events leading up, which you can find in American Yarp, World War II. Now the emperor, the Japanese military, as well as the rest of the country, yes, civilians included, had no intention of surrendering. Now even women were known to take up arms and inflict as much harm as they possibly could on our American soldiers. Now surrendering is not part of the Japanese discipline. It is well known in the battlefield if a Japanese officer had a sword, instead of being captured as a prisoner of war, they would call what's called a Harry Carry and commit suicide by their own sword. This was also well known in World War II when American forces and allies were fighting against Japan on the islands and in the country. So the brutality of the Japanese soldiers hiding in caves and dugouts, especially on the Philippine Islands, where the Filipino forces and American forces were on unfamiliar ground. The Japanese soldiers would hide in these caves and dugouts and do ambush attacks on our forces. Now, if they did capture any American soldiers, one in particular, which is called the Bataan Death March, was a march of over 80 miles that our soldiers were forced to do with a lack of food, water, and rest. The Jap Japanese soldiers were also forcing those uh, soldiers on the march to carry those that had passed away due to um, the, the circumstances as well as those soldiers that were exhausted. Now taking a look at these photos here is an example of a kamikaze uh, in a plane coming down on our, our naval ships and uh, American soldiers right here. So let's discuss the crucial use of the atomic bomb in World War II and why it was important that we did so. So rethinking the bomb, think on KERA, Robert James Maddox states, mentions that President Truman in his memoirs claimed that using the atomic bombs prevented invasion on that what would have cost 500,000 American lives and about 40,000 American lives on the islands that were being invaded. Now, two bombs were detonated. Each bomb is equivalent to about 15 to 20,000 TNT. One bomb was detonated in the industrial center of Hiroshima, and the other one was detonated at Nagasaki, a major military port. Now, this was really important because this established the United States as a power. They had this technology. Other countries were not far behind us. In fact, some countries were only six months behind us in this technology. Germany in particular, particular had this technology, and had they been ahead of us, would have bombed Britain as well as France. So taking a look, this helped establish us as a world power. It also helped bring Japan to surrendering against us. This is a devastating and necessary decision in the war against fascism. 
As Winston Churchill wrote, and you can find this in Taking Sides, Clashing, View Clashing Views in American History, Volume 2, he states President Truman was tormented by the terrible responsibilities that rested upon him in regards to the unlimited effusions of American blood. So although we know that this atomic bomb was actually devastating and tragic, it was a necessary evil to bring uh, an end to the war and to save many, many American lives and allied lives. Allied lives. I'd like you to take a moment. So in conclusion, as we have reviewed the events leading up to the invasion, as well as the use of uh, the atomic bomb, I want you to think of something. There are approximately 14,000 nuclear weapons just between the United States and Russia. Each country says they must have these specific arms to deter countries. So a similar argument can be made about human cloning. Just because we have the technology, should we use it? Many would say yes, because if we don't, others will. Thank you.